Hey, Steve Gamash here with another Chef Knives to Go quick look product review. And I did not research this name pronunciation, so hopefully I don't mess it up too bad. But uh, anyway, this is the uh, Tsunehisa G3 or Ginsan Migaki Petty 135mm knife. So the uh, core stainless steel, this, this knife does have uh, three layers to it. There's a soft stainless cladding on either side of the core steel. I'll have to show you a close up, but it's a, uh, you know, why not do that just right now? Let's just. Get that out of the way here, and if you look carefully, you will see the cladding layer. It's it's a little faint, even in person, it's hard to pick up. But there's your cladding, and there's your core steel there. So this core steel, the, the center cutting edge steel, is known as Ginsan or Silver 3 or G3 or Ginsanko. There's a few different names people call it, but it is a fine grain conventional stainless steel that really is awesome for kitchen knives. It's uh, easy to sharpen, it'll get wicked sharp, and holds a you know, reasonable edge. It's, it is not a powdered metallurgy steel or anything like that, but it's a great stainless steel for kitchen knives. And the heat treat's about 60-61 on that, so it's got a little bit of hardness to it. The uh, cladding, again, is soft stainless, so it's an all stainless blade, so easy to maintain. And uh, the weight and dimensions can vary a little bit on these from knife to knife, especially the handle uh, might be different density and so on. And if they change the handles, that might change it a little bit. But this particular one is 65 grams or 2.3 ounces in weight. And the edge length is about 140 millimeters on it or 5.5 inches all the way down the edge. The overall length is about 10.4 inches. And then the spine thickness, uh, these are fairly thin blades, so I got about 2.1 millimeters at the back of the blade here, spine thickness. And then I measured it halfway down and got about 1.9. So it does start to kind of thin out a little bit. And then as the knife grind kind of gets thinned out towards the edge, that also thins it out towards the tip. It's not a super skinny tip, but it's got, you know, it's fairly thin. And it's got a nice taper as it gets ground down. You can see how it just starts to thin out. That's called distal taper. And then here's the back side. It's not a particularly tall blade, but there's the, the choil shot, the back of the blade. The blade height is 27.75 on this one, or a little under 28. It's not a particularly tall blade. Handles are oval, ambidextrous, uh, maple with ferrule with a walnut uh, main part. And the fit and finish is nicely done on these. Got a little bit of polish to them, as you can kind of see. And then they've done a good job of glue up where the tang goes into the handle. It looks pretty well sealed to me. But always check that. If you've got gaps in there, you might want to put something in there to seal that so you don't get any moisture in there. Handle circumference, uh, I measure that right about here. It's about 62 or a little under 2.5 inches. So a little bit smaller, as is appropriate to this kind of blade. The uh, balance point on these is going to be back a little bit just because it's such a small blade. Um, and there's your balance point. The uh, fit and finish is nicely done on these. Let's take a kind of get our beauty shot here. There we go. So you can kind of see the finish of the blade as well. They do have a hand engraved or chisel kanji on here. So it's a very nice touch. It's becoming less common these days. So you can see a very nice job on that. You can run your fingers over it and feel it. That's a neat feature. And then you can see the kind of the finish marks on uh, vertical on this. And then you can see the core steel peeking out from the cladding right there. The left side of the blade has a little kind of a small embossed kanji on it right there. You can see the grind on this is a little flatter because the, the cladding comes up higher on the knife. So it's a little flatter on this side grind-wise than on the right side. Uh, what else here? So... I'd say this has a little bit of, fair amount of stiffness to it, given the thickness. So it's a fairly stiff blade. And here is the cutting board profile. So just kind of fairly easy to use profile. You can rock a little bit with this, push pull cut, little glide cuts. You know, it's, it's not a full size chef knife by any means, but um, so you've got a little bit of clearance here for your fingers on the cutting board. This is an awkward angle for me, but if you're using a shorter knife like this, it's not very tall uh, at the heel and you have clearance issues for your fingers for some board work, you've got a couple options. One is if you've got a thicker cutting board, you can see this cutting board's a little thicker. Just go ahead and work off the edge of the board. Now you've got all the clearance that you want and just work off the edge. 
Um, if your board's not very thick, you can get closer to the edge of your counter, although food can sometimes drop off a little more if you're not careful on the floor, but your, <laughs> your call on that. But there are ways to kind of get around that if that's an issue for you. So this is a very nice looking blade, traditional uh, wa or Japanese handled style, all stainless, great steel, easy to use, easy to maintain, and uh, nice looking. So this is the uh, Tsunihisa G3 Migaki Petty 135 millimeter knife.